Stan, we're getting a lot of mixed signals coming out of the housing market. So on the on the bearish side, we've got falling home ownership. Yesterday we saw some sort of soggy existing home sales. We've got very strong new home sales. What's your overall read on the housing market right now? Well, I think we're still in a recovery phase. So you know, certainly the February existing home sales numbers, that w which were positive, was better than the January numbers, which we, where we saw a strong dip in existing home sales. And we are expecting uh, later on today new home sales. We're expecting to be down slightly. We're seeing a slight upward trend in, in interest rates and new home sales are more sensitive to interest rates than existing home sales and existing home sales generally are doing about as well as we can expect given pretty anemic income growth um, House of formation rates are starting to slowly recover, but they're still a long way from where they should be. And then, of course, we've still got millennials who are delaying uh, marriage and, and having kids, which yes, are delaying thank their you. I am indeed home ownership. delaying all of those things, including home ownership. Uh, why? <laughs> uh, what, are, what are rising rates going to do to the housing recovery? Well, I think that uh, you know, it's. I, I guess I am cautiously optimistic about what rates are going to do to the housing market. I think that. Broadly speaking, when rates rise, it should be because we're starting to see incomes rise as well. So it should be offsetting there. Right. And I'm a little bit concerned, quite frankly, that most buyers right now in a lot of markets are looking at these home prices through this distorted lens of very low mortgage rates, which lead them to oftentimes bid up the price of housing more than they should be. So if you look at Southern California and the Bay Area, for example, those are markets that only look affordable because of very low rates. And I really want okay. home buyers to start to look at home prices. So you home think if, through, if rates rise, home prices will reverse a little, will come down a little bit? I don't think they'll reverse, but you're, you're going to start to see home prices, instead of rising at 10, 15 percent like you are in some of these really overheated markets right now, they're going to start to slow way down um, to more reasonable rates. Stan, we looked at house, uh, data from uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, uh, about a week ago, and we found some stuff that surprised us, which was that we would have assumed that home, homes were getting smaller, that people were simplifying. But it turns out that's just something you find on the culture section of the New York Times. People are actually building larger houses. What's driving that? That's right. Yeah, it, it's actually it's more than an 80-year trend now towards mm -hmm. larger and larger homes. You, we saw about a one- to two-year decline in that right after the housing mm -hmm. um, bubble popped. But after that, it went back to its 80-year-plus uh, you know, increase where people are just in, in, you know, wanting bigger and bigger homes. So that, there's nothing economic driving that. That's cultural. That's entirely cultural. And, and a lot of it has to do with the privatization of our leisure time and everything else, where instead of spending time in bowling alleys or out at the Rotary Club or Kiwanis, okay. we're, families spend their time in their homes now. So therefore, they want media centers. They want okay. uh, you know, larger living rooms, great rooms. They're just spending all of their time in their, in their homes now. That's how, about, how about student debt? Is that playing a role in this? Because, I mean, you're, we're hearing staggering statistics that, the, you know, the net worth of a 25 to 35-year-old is much lower than normal because they're sitting on these, you know, piles of debt. Is that playing a role in new household formation? You know, I think with student debt, it's, it's really an issue where it is causing some delay, particularly among the millennial class in right. home ownership. But it's just that it's a delay because what we find is that um, having completed a college education, of course, your, 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 uh, your salary is commensurately higher and therefore you're in a better position to actually own a home. So I think net-net is going to end up being a wash because while people are delaying it while they're getting more education, they've been getting more education because the job market has been so bad. Um, and but now, as you see wages pick up, that, that's right. That and, and as you get college education, they'll be making more money, and that's going to actually um, yield higher household formation rates and more home ownership in the, in the, in the future.